He died actually 17 days after diagnosis. He died on the 12th of May, 10 days before we were to go to Medjugorje. I was married for 37 years. Um, we were married in 1962. We lived in Ireland for six years. After we were married, had our two children, and then we emigrated to Australia. We were in Australia from 1969 to 1982. And then he decided he wanted to come back to Ireland, and we did. Came home to Ireland in 1982, still knew nothing about Medjugorje. In the late 90s, somebody gave me a copy of Heather Parsons' book, A Light Between the Hills, which I didn't even read because I was a Lourdes person. And I went with a group of friends from my parish to Lourdes every two years, and I had no interest in Medjugorje. But I left that book lying around at home and my husband, who would never go to Lourdes, was never interested in going anywhere religious, read the book about Medjugorje. And one day in January 1997, I came in and he said to me, you know that place in that book? He couldn't pronounce the name. And I said, Medjugorje. And he said, yes, I'd like to go there. So I said, because being very pleased that he wanted to go somewhere religious, I said, OK, we'll go to Medjugorje. I found out about Marian pilgrimages and went in and booked for the two of us to go on the 22nd of May, 1997. The beginning of March, he began to complain about a pain in his chest he couldn't get rid of, and the doctor was treating him for a bad chest infection for six weeks. Still wasn't getting any better. On the 15th of April, I had to call the doctor again for him, who sent us both in a taxi to Beaumont Hospital to have Bill x-rayed. When he was x-rayed, they came out and they told us, told me that they wanted to keep him in because there was something on the lungs they were worried about. Over the next 10 days, they did all the scans, biopsies, and on the 25th of April, told us he had extensive cancer in both lungs and a huge mass on the breastbone. And I said, we're going away on the 22nd of May to Medjugorje, and the consultant said, no, Bill won't be leaving the country. I went into Marian pilgrimages the following day and told them, thinking at that time that Bill would be treated, maybe an operation or something. They gave me a credit note for two years, and I went back to the hospital and I told Bill, those people were very good, they gave us a credit note for two years. And he said to me, if I can't go to Medjugorje, you go anyway. I said, Bill, I've no interest in Medjugorje, Lourdes is my place. I said, if you're not going to Medjugorje, I'm not going began to get agitated and he said, promise me if I can't go, you'll go. Bring Agnes, that was my friend, on my ticket, but promise me you'll go. And I said, OK, I promise, but when you get treated, we'll be going together. But I will promise I'll go if you can't go. He died actually 17 days after diagnosis. He died on the 12th of May, 10 days before we were to go to Medjugorje. And I didn't think of it any further until five weeks later, I was passing by the Marian Pilgrimage office, realized the promise I'd made to my husband. And I said, I have to get that promise out of the way before I can carry on with my life. I was very involved in a lot of stuff in the community, prayer groups, but other things besides clubs and everything. And I knew I would fill the space with something else. I had to get this promise out of the way. So I went and I asked Tom Field in Marian Pilgrimages, could I bring somebody else on Bill's ticket? And he said, yes. I said, when have you got two places for Medjugorje? And he says, next week. And I booked myself and Agnes to go from the 17th of June to the 24th of June, 1997, not even realizing it was coming up to anniversary time. We knew nothing absolutely nothing about Medjugorje at that time. This was a once-off visit to fulfill a promise to my husband. And you know, it's very extraordinary the way Our Lady works because 
we arrived on a Saturday, we were going home on a Saturday, and up until the Thursday, it was still a once-off visit. We were invited to be present at an apparition with Eve on an apparition hill on the Thursday night at 10 o'clock. Because I have heart problems, I was determined I was going to climb. So we started very early and climbed up. And we were very close to Ivan for that apparition. At 10 o'clock, when the apparition started, and that total, complete silence enveloped the whole area, it was just unbelievable. But what happened to me then was not physical. I cried because it was only five weeks since I'd lost my husband and I felt he would have loved it there to be up there that night. But it was internal, actually, what happened, because as soon as the apparition started, I knew Our Lady was there. I did not have the slightest doubt that Our Lady was present. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I've got to let people know about this place. And I remember saying, Blessed Mother, I can't see you, I can't hear you, but I know you're here. And I promise I will bring others here. But I said, I'm not a salesperson. You send them, I'll bring them. And I come down the hill and I said to Agnes, I'm bringing a group here next year. And she said, what about the ones off? And I said, I don't know. And, I, and she says, what about Lourdes? I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know when I'll get back to Lourdes. All I know, I have to bring people here. I brought my first group in 1998, in May, I brought two more groups in October in 1998, and I've been bringing groups ever since. Well, this is my 111th group in 21 years, but the amazing thing is that at that time, I had heart problems. I still have heart problems. They developed in 1981 when I was only 44 years of age, and in 1985, I had a bypass. 1994, I was sick again, and the surgeon who did the bypass, Mr. Nelligan, a famous heart surgeon in Ireland, told me he could do nothing more for me. He said, Carmel, he says, you have two minor arteries working, and you will eventually need a heart transplant. And I said, when? He said, when you're on tubes. I've never had the heart transplant. I now have one minor artery working. They don't understand in the hospital how I'm functioning because they said there's very little blood getting to your heart. We don't understand how you're functioning. And I said, well, you know that guy up there? And they look at you as if you have two heads. And are you talking about God? I said, yes. I said, he has plans for me and work for me to do. And as long as he has that work for me, that minor artery will keep working. When I'm at home, I, I, I do have chest pain, I do have bad turns, I go unconscious from time to time. It's happened to me here in Medjugorje, the guides have been fantastic. The strange thing is, when I come to Medjugorje, I seem to get boundless energy to do what I have to do when I'm here in Medjugorje. My own doctor won't stop me coming. He says, no, I'm not going to stop you coming, going to Medjugorje, because I don't even understand, he says how you're doing what you're doing, because your records tell me you shouldn't be able to do what you're doing. It's Our Lady. Medjugorje took over my life from the time my husband died. A couple of years after my husband died, I said to a priest friend of mine, I'm so sorry Bill never got to Medjugorje because he wanted to be there. And the priest said, it wasn't Bill he wanted, it. she wanted, it was you. 